time has been far spent. Amen? I come from an era where we stayed in church from 10 o'clock to 3. Amen. Amen. But I know this is a new era. Facebook and TikTok has dumbed down our attention span. Amen. So I do recognize the time. And I won't be before you long. Amen. A lot has been said. We thank God for you, Pastor Johnson, Sister Rolanda, Ariana, Macy. It's a blessing to be able to, to serve someone and have someone serve you that really love the Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. It is, it's a lot of people that don't mean you any good nowadays. Yeah. Amen. And to be able to have a pastor that you know loves and that's, that's a great privilege, church. Yeah. Especially yeah. in the times in which we live. And we thank God for you. Well, enough has been said about our pastor because we, we can't say enough. We can talk, we can brag about you all day. Amen. Amen. We can brag about you all day. We thank God for you. That's the most important. Amen. I can promise I won't be before you long. I, it's not like I don't have anything to say, Roy. Amen. It's not like that at all. But I, I'm, I, I, I'm going to ask you to give me at least 15 minutes of, of your time. Give me 15 minutes of your undivided attention, and I'll get out of you. That's good enough. Amen. I'm not going to shortchange the Lord. Amen. Amen. Because we know that, that this is a day to celebrate Pastor Johnson, his family, but it's all about God. At the end of the day, none of this would be possible without the Creator. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, if you will, turn with me to the book of Acts. Book of Acts, the 20th chapter. And I'm going to read a few of those verses for the sake of clarity. But before we do that, let us pray. Father, we are forever grateful for who you are. And God, we can't do anything without you. And nothing that we do would make sense, Lord God, if, if one God if it's not done to your glory. So, Father, we come today asking that you would superintend this time, Lord God. That you would forgive us for all that we have seen, Lord God, and short, come short of your glory. And we just pray, Lord God, that everything that has been said will be pleasing to you. Lord God, everything that's done will bring glory to your name. So, Father, we don't take it lightly to be able to. Bring the message today, Lord God. We just pray that you will be pleased. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Acts 20 chapter. Acts 20 chapter beginning. I'm going to just cover a few verses for the sake of time, all right? Verse number 25. Verse 25 says, now I know that none of you, none of, wait a minute, verse 24, however I consider, I consider my life nothing, worth nothing to me, my only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. Now I know that none of you among whom I have gone about preaching the kingdom will ever see me again. Therefore, declare I, I therefore I declare to you today that I am innocent of the blood of any of you. For I am I have not hesitated to proclaim to you the whole will of God. Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he brought with his own blood. Verse number 29. I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you and will not spare the flock. Even from your own number of men will arise and distort the truth in order to draw away the disciples after them. 
So be on guard. Remember that for three years I never stopped warning each of you, night and day, with tears. Very briefly, I'd like to speak on a message. The purpose of the past. The purpose of the past. Listen, a lot of what I say is going to be pertaining to the past, but it's a purpose, okay? It's for a purpose of, and it looks like it has already been done. Subtitle I like to speak a pastor worthy of appreciation. Amen. A pastor worthy of appreciation. In this text, Paul has he's uh, he's making a farewell message. Paul is uh, he's getting ready to, to to go to Jerusalem. Amen. And he knows that he'll never see these people face again. So he, he, he travels back to different churches that he had planted, or that were planted, and he's giving them what, he, what the, some scholars call his farewell speech. Amen? Uh, he, he, he's telling them the things that are more important and dear to his heart. Because he knew that he would never see them again, he was telling them everything he felt they needed to know so that when he was gone, they would be able to continue the work that he started. Yes. Amen. Paul was a special kind of guy. Some, it is arguably said that Paul was the, 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 the world's greatest missionary beside Jesus Christ. Paul was a man that he, 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 he could heal the sick. Amen. God used him in a miraculous way. He could pray and heal the sick. Earlier in chapter 20, where Paul had been speaking all night long, because he knew he wasn't going to see him again, he took the opportunity to speak with him. And in the early part of chapter 20, Paul spoke all night long. He spoke so long till a young man that was in the room, he fell asleep. Amen. The Bible said he fell asleep. And he, not only did he fall asleep, but he fell out the woman. Glory to God. He fell out the woman. And after he fell out of the woman, Paul went down, scooped him up, and said, Don't worry about it. It is like it. In other words, Paul went down. And because the Holy Spirit was so potent in his life, he touched the young man. His life comes back to him. Now that's power. That's it. That's power. Paul. He could lay hands. In other verses in Acts, it's talking about how Paul, God used Paul so powerfully that handkerchiefs that had been on his body would touch the sick. You better say it, brother. And they'd be healed. This is powerful. Oh, yeah. Paul was a powerful brother. Paul, Paul was, was, was used by God in a miraculous way. But in this text, we see that Paul, spirit, was so he was born, he was bound in the spirit that he that chains and afflictions awaited him. In other words, even though Paul was such a good man, he still had enemies. Amen. He still had people that wanted to take his life. Amen. And, and, and in this text, we see that. But Paul stopped here in for a while, and he called for the elders. And he told them, he, he, he begins to remind them of the example that he had set before them. He begins in verse number 17, he called them. <coughs> he said in verse number, verse number 17, you know how I live with you from the first day I came to the province of Asia. Listen, somebody said when Pastor Johnson first got here, he didn't wait no time. Amen. He got there the time he got to make it. Mind of Paul. He didn't waste no time. Amen. Amen. He knew his mission. Amen. He did. Amen. 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 I served the law with great humility and with tears, and in the midst of the testing, a severe testing by the plot of the Jewish opponent. In other words, he said, I persevered. Even when times are hard, he said, I kept on. Yes. My reason, he said, I could have gave up. He said, but I didn't because church, this man going passed out and he was up here preaching. I don't know about you, but I've been trying to get out and go see what's wrong, but this man loved the Lord so much, he made sure she was in good hands. Yes, Amen. 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 But he kept doing what he was called to do. Amen. Amen. 
will be helpful to you, but I taught you publicly and from house to house. I have declared to the, both Jews and the Greeks that they must turn to God in repentance and have faith in yes, Jesus Christ. Yes, and other words, Paul said, listen, I, 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 I preached in season and I preached out of season. Yes, I preached when they wanted to hear and when they didn't want to hear. Yes, he said, I preached in public and I preached in private. He said, and so if you was around Paul, it wasn't no excuse for you not going to Lord. Because Paul
declare to this day, I'm innocent of your blood. Paul was saying, because I have preached the whole counsel of God to you, I'm innocent. Paul said, I'm innocent. He, he, he said, I'm innocent of any man's blood. See, if, if we don't, it's a dangerous job being a preacher. Right? And I learned a lot from the study of this text. This is a dangerous position. Because people's lives are in your hands.
full-time job. I seen a caption once, it, it, it showed two women, two black women were at dinner, and the caption read, try not to talk about it anymore. <laughs> Amen. Don't talk about it anymore. Boy, that was the quietest meal I ever seen. <laughs> But quiet, two black women together, they can't talk about nobody. <laughs> That's a quiet thing. All you see was me. <laughs> you gotta be careful. Amen. Listen, as a believer, you got to watch yourself. Amen. And if we watching ourselves, I ain't got time to worry about what you're doing, bro. Present situation. 
In the past, he did all that he could. He did all that he knew was right. In the present, he's now headed to Jerusalem because he's having a, he's being led by the Spirit because he knows that chains and shackles await him once he gets to Jerusalem. He don't know what that looks like. He don't know what it entails. Of. All he knows that suffering is an ahead. And Paul, Paul could turn it and try to run from it, but he was so single-minded this and so dedicated to his calling that he was willing to go where the Spirit was leading. Not only that, we see from verse 25 through 34 that Paul talked about, he gave them the reason that they were to take, to take heed to themselves, to the flock, and to rely on God. He was telling them to avoid being careless, to being shallow, avoid being shallow, being careless, being coveted. Paul said, So be on God. Verse 32, he said, now I commit to God. I commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among who? Those who are sanctified. I have not coveted anyone's silver, gold, or clothing. You yourself know that these hands of mine have supplied my own needs and for me and my companion. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of work, we must help the weak. Remember, remembering the words the Lord Jesus Christ said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. In other words, Paul was getting ready to go. He said, listen, now that I'm about to go, I've done all I can do for you. Now I commit you back to God. I commit you to God and his word. And he's saying that <clears throat> he's clearing the air. Not once have I done you wrong. Amen. Not once have I covered anything that you have. Paul, Paul said, these hands of mine have supplied my need. It has supplied for me everything that I need and for those that are with me. Right here, Paul is warning against greed. Paul, he's warning, he's warning those elders that listen. He's telling them, I didn't, what I'm doing, I didn't do for money. It's not like a pastor that serves and he's not serving for money. Amen? Amen. Somebody that don't really care about what's in your pocket, he's just doing what thus says the Lord. Right. Paul was telling them, hey, listen, I didn't do anything for money. I work for what I got. Right. You know, Paul, Paul was trying to be real. And if he wasn't trying to be rich, Paul is giving us an example of we. I know the world tells us that we should get all we can. Amen. The world, the world is telling us that we should have a piece of the American pie. But I believe Paul is doing what Jesus done in warning us against such. Because the Bible over and over warns us about wanting to be rich. Amen. He warns you not to want to be rich. Paul warns you that, that, that be content. He said, Godliness with great gain is content. Yeah. And Paul is warning that, brother, even though the world tells us we have to have this, that, and that, Paul is saying, not so. Paul said the most important thing to you that what should be the most important thing to you is your relationship with God. Yeah. You see, sometimes we can get so hung up in money that we lose sight of who God is. Sometimes we can accumulate so much money that the money becomes our God. Right. And if you want to, if you want to know whether or not money becomes you, 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 your, your perspective toward money, I'm gonna ask everybody here to give me twenty dollars right now. Don't look. Give me twenty dollars right now. Go in your purse. You see that feeling? Just funny. <laughs> you see that feeling that rolls up in you? Though? You saw that feeling? Because that's the way we design. 
We celebrate you today, brother. Because of what Jesus has already done. 